Hello my fellow scientists, today I want to talk to you about the killifish and about Kaplan-Meier curves. The killifish is a tiny fish used as a model organism in some biological studies. It was recently published that they have figured out the mechanism by which these fish enter a state called diapause, which is sort of like suspended animation, where the fish can almost die, but then revive after a very long time in order to avoid really harsh conditions. I originally found out about the killifish because they're used in aging studies. They're one of the shortest lived vertebrates. So the fish can go from birth to old age and death within three months. Now that seems kind of sad for the fish, but it's really useful for aging studies. So if you run an aging study on, say, mice, and your intervention increases lifespan by a factor of two, you've had to wait six years for the outcome. Whereas with these killifish, they have a lifespan of three months, you double their lifespan, you have to wait six months. Obviously, that's a really big advantage in order to figure out what's happening and happening quickly. They're also a lot closer to human biology than are, say, fruit flies, which are another common model organism that has a very short lifespan. As one example, you could calorically restrict, that is to say, put them on a very limited diet, and this extends lifespan in everything from C. elegans worms to fruit flies to mammals. And so using this creature for that kind of study makes things a lot faster. Another possible intervention is a molecule called nicotinamide riboside. So this has been touted by a number of companies as being a potential anti-aging agent. Uh, it's a supplement. It's not totally clear whether it works or not, but one could use these killifish in order to answer that at least in a more common vertebrate animal. Now, how would you actually measure that? So what you could do is you could look at the time of death as a function of either getting this intervention or not, and you'd expect to see that the ones that got this intervention had a later time of death, a longer lifespan. So let's say that you took 100 fish and you applied this nicotinamide riboside or some other molecule, and you waited until all the fish were dead, and you looked at the effect of having or not having the nicotinamide riboside. So you'd expect to see that the ones that got the treatment lived longer and had a larger uh, total lifespan on this graph. But the downside here, of course, is you do have to wait all the way until all the fish are dead in order to get this data. And two, it may hide some averaging effects. So for instance, if this treatment reduced the lifespan of half the animals by a lot, but extended the lifespan of a lot of the other animals by a lot, the average number would hide that fact. You'd just say, well, maybe there wasn't any effect at all. When in fact, there is a big effect. It was just in two different directions for different individual fish. So this is where the Kaplan-Meier comes in. This is a way of graphing this kind of data in a way that allows you to see individual changes to some extent, but also to visualize the results of these experiments before every single animal has died. Here's how this works. First, you graph time on the x-axis, and then you graph the total percentage surviving at that time on the y. And what you expect is that, oh, over time, the survival rate should go down. On a long enough timeline, the survival of everyone goes to zero. What you then do is plot another Kaplan-Meier for the intervention case, right? So here's the control case. You add the intervention, and you'd hope that that line would be longer and flatter. Obviously, that means that creatures on average are living longer, but it also means that you don't have to run out till they all die. You can see the divergence in these two lines earlier. Really important for medical studies where you don't necessarily have an infinitely long time to wait before you publish and before you claim a difference between your control and your experimental case. The shape of the curve tells you something too. So if the shape of the curve dips quickly, but then extends over a long time, you might infer then that there's sort of two different effects, a short-term die-off followed by a long-term longevity effect. And that would be totally hidden in the average data, but you can see it in the shape of the Kaplan-Meier curve. Of course, in this kind of case, you probably just stop the study because the intervention seems to be killing the creatures in the first place. Anyhow, I hope you find that interesting. If you do, I hope you'll tune in next week. We go over our science and science we find interesting every week here in the Allen Lab.